Alrighty, well, we appreciate all y'all coming out today. Uh, we're kind of sort of doing a survey of, uh, of uh, banjo styles, um, bluegrass and old time, and sort of give you some uh, examples of some of the different styles that, that have happened down through the, the last hundred plus years or so. Um, don't exactly know how to start here, but I think I'm just going to kind of let each person uh, talk a little about a little bit about what they do and play, and I guess we we can start down here with Ivy if you want to talk about I don't want to go first. things. <laughs> um, well, I guess I, I definitely fall into the old time camp for uh, banjo styles. I got to spend six or seven years playing with some great folks from East Tennessee, Janice and Bill Birchfield, and we just lost Bill a little more than a month ago, and. He um, got to spend just hours and hours sitting with him, picking with him, and uh, he was a wonderful two-finger banjo player, good claw, claw hammer player, and I uh, was listening to this this morning, and this is a tune I always think of when I think of Bill. It's one he liked to play a lot. It's called Jesse James. That's great. That um, type of style there reminds me a little bit of um, George Pegram as well. <laughs> I probably have a little George Pegram. I was going to say that <laughs> type of thing. That's, that's really great. Um, that's a two-finger style of, of banjo, which is um, sort of it's a finger-picking style that's come. There's several, um, I don't exactly know maybe exactly where all, all that came from, but um, there's a three-finger banjo style that was popular in the 1880s and 90s, that uh, especially up north, and they had banjo orchestras, and a lot of these records filtered down south. And um, folks like probably the most well-known of early finger-style uh, banjo players that made records, uh, that's most well-known at least because of how many records he sold, was Charlie Poole. And uh, he was a three-finger banjo player. And uh, so that, that a lot of those types of styles worked into uh, traditional music, but uh, I have a feeling they were probably the two finger styles. That's really it's really nice. Um, other folks like Wade Maynard were, were two finger banjo players as well in uh, the Blue Ridge region. Do you have another one you want to play? Can I do something with maybe claw hammer? Sure, you can do whatever you want to do. We'll talk about that too. Here's another one I played a lot of times with Bill. Train 45.
George Pegram is a wonderful banjo player, sort of a musical hero of mine, uh, in addition to Bill Birchfield. And he was from the county next to where I was born. He was from Guilford County, North Carolina. And great um, two-finger, three-finger player who was the king of Galax, a wonderful entertainer, dancer, singer. And um, I certainly have tried to adopt some of his styles. And I, he's the reason Rounder Records exists. When I met Janice and Bill, I had only been playing banjo for maybe a year. And I was up at Clifftop Fiddler's Convention and met them, and they invited me to come play. The next morning, they said, we're going on stage. Do you want to go play in the competition with us? And so I went and played with them, and then they said, well, we're going back home. We're going to go to Galax. Do you want to come with us? I would say Bill is my greatest musical influence and I'm certain that everything I play is influenced by the way that he played. Can we would sit for hours and hours and hours and play banjo or play guitar, or play fiddles together and I we could read each other backwards and forwards. I'll do you another tune that was a favorite of Bill Birchfield's. It's called Walking in the Parlor. I'd like to sort of step back. I'll move over here to Kirk, and we'll kind of do sort of a chronology of some of this. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about? Well, tell them about this banjo here. Well, this banjo is a, copy, a replica of Fred Cochran's banjo that's in the Smithsonian. And I went up with uh, Kevin Four several years ago, and we got to visit Fred's banjo, and Wade Ward's banjo, and Tommy Gerald's fiddle for a couple hours. And he pretty much replicated it here and uh, I guess these die-hard fans they want to get as close as they can right. to get the same sound and everything and give us a Fred Cockrum tune there for us
We've got a really interesting uh, mix of folks here on the stage. Um, of course, Ivy talked about um, learning a lot from from Bill Birchfield, who is it's a long that's a long family of of great old time music tradition. And uh, Kirk here is actually um, pretty pretty unique to be his age and have have learned at the feet of Tommy Gerald, who so many folks um, know and love. Um, you want to talk a little bit about? Oh, yeah, well, Tommy. Tommy, yeah, Tommy and my grandpa were about the same age, grew up together there in Round Peak, and uh, come to find out I was doing some genealogy work, and Tommy's grandmother, Amber, was a uh, Sutton, out of the same batch from up in Carroll County that I okay. came from, so yeah. I didn't know that, but yeah. <laughs> didn't, make, didn't make me play any better. <laughs> Did you but, learn uh, any band? I know you learned a lot of fiddle from from Tommy. Did you learn any band? Yeah, or? I learned. I, I learned fiddle pretty good there from back about right up till he died. And I remember one day he said, "Well, Kirk said I need to show you something on the banjo." I said, "You ain't might, if you play the fiddle, you ought to play the banjo." Mm-hmm. So they might go somewhere and might need a banjo picker. So he tuned my, my banjo down low for that John Brown mm-hmm. stream, and I just kept on working at it from then on. That's great. And try to match what the fiddle does, and that's what's kind of unique about the round pick stuff. You do a lot of pull-offs and hammer-ons and slides that matches the fiddle, so it's sort of, it's not just like, just back up or whatever. Yeah. It just, because that's all there was as a fiddle and a banjo back in the days. Yeah. Little house dances that everybody used to have. Right. It's really interesting with claw hammer banjo and 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 finger style banjo as well. They it seems that, that a lot of the old time players, especially in this region, would play both. Folks like Wade Ward, folks like Fred Cockrum, uh, and if, like Frank Jenkins. And we'll get Kirk to give you a little example of, of some of that style as well. Um, but it's so in today, so many, or at least in the last twenty years or so, folks have have tend to segregate. Uh, finger style is bluegrass and claw hammer is old time and it's never been that way uh, they they've been concurrent alongside each other for for many many years and um, Kirk is really uh, well schooled in in the style of, of some of those guys as well uh, such as Frank Jenkins you think we could do something like oh, that I don't or, know. or we could do, uh, we could do a, Jack of Diamonds or something even yeah, maybe we if might we wanted do to. something like that uh, Frank Jenkins actually worked with uh, in Da Costa Waltz and the Southern Broadcasters with uh, Tommy Gerald's father, Ben Gerald, and uh, and they made recordings in the 20s with Clawhammer Banjo and with uh, Fingerstyle Banjo as well. We'll try to give you a little example of uh, of Kirk doing some of the. Uh, Frank Jenkins style.
I guess my first influence was my grandpa Sutton, whose family came from Surrey County, and before that they came from up in Carroll County. And he played the fiddle and just about anything come along. And he was, when I first heard him play the fiddle, that was, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I started with the fiddle and then started listening to other re recordings and got to start meeting some old timers of his generation from born around the turn of the century. And and just kept looking for these old guys to learn from. I think the the fiddle and the banjo is really what makes it round peak. The the real melodic the blending of the fiddle and the banjo. Yeah, Fred was an influence, although I, I didn't get to meet him, but I, I went to his funeral and I still know his daughter good and I visit her on occasion. And it tickled her whenever I come, just like, well, get to hear some daddy's music. She pulls her dad's fiddle out, and I play a little bit on it, and I've got my replica banjo. I play that, and that, that really tickles her, takes her back. And getting to know the families, too, I guess, like the Gerald family and the Jenkins family and all of them, they've sort of took me in as one of their own, and I really feel honored to be able to carry the music on. Show y'all a little bit of the Oscar Jenkins style from down in Surrey County that you get to hear occasionally on Ivy's show. Yeah, Oscar was Frank Jenkins' son, and he had a, he sort of embellished his daddy's style just a little bit, really, really unique, so. Maybe. So um, that style of banjo is like a two-finger style, and uh, out of that comes, <clears throat> if you step forward about a generation, in this region anyway, uh, you'll find folks like um, a fellow by the name of Raymond Sweeney, who um, sort of took that style and em embellished it a little bit uh, into a style that's a lot closer to bluegrass. I'll hand you your, your fiddle here. And I'll give you, and this is going to lead us to the fellow on the end, down here. I'll play you just a little bit of an example of um, sort of how uh, Raymond Sweeney, some, if you're from the region and old enough, in recent years you may have known him as Raymond Patton. But he was one of the great uh, three-finger banjo players, 
pre-bluegrass in this region. And, his, and actually, in 1941, he won uh, the banjo contest here at Galax, and the uh, Library of Congress recorded it that year. And uh, what I'm going to play is what he, he played there. Um, he did a little version of John Henry, and I'll give you an example of that. And his roll patterns are, are different from how most bluegrass people play today, but, uh, but very similar in certain ways. So here's Raymond Sweeney's John Henry. <laughs> Sort of, um, so there, there's a kind of example of early pre-bluegrass three-finger uh, that's the next step after folks like, like Frank Jenkins, who you heard a little piece of uh, there with the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, Raymond Sweeney, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know a lot of the history here, but I, my understanding that Raymond Sweeney uh, had a pretty heavy influence on your dad. Uh, this is Bobby Lundy. His father was Ted Lundy. Uh, probably the most well-known uh, three-finger uh, uh, bluegrass banjo player uh, from this region, him and, and Cullen Gallion probably as well. But, um, Bobby, if you want to talk a little bit and play us a tune or something like that. You know, grew up playing bluegrass, but always loved old-time music. And, and Dad, he did too, and he'd try to he'd come down here and listen and play with these old-timers, and, and he'd try to play note for note what they could do and it's kind of hard a lot of times but uh, this is a tune that well he didn't actually teach me I had to learn it <laughs> but, uh, this is old standard down here and people it's called Sally Ann and people think it's when I say Sally Ann they think of Earl Scruggs you know? oh, yeah. I was like no no this is I call that Sail Away Ladies to me it mm -hmm, sounds yeah. more like that but I'll play you a little bit of Sally Ann <laughs> Bobby Lundy, and I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. And I learned how to play from my dad, Ted Lundy, which he was right here from Galax, and and started playing when I was about five years old, and started out on fiddle, and 
wound up playing the banjo when I was about 12 or 13. Well, it's kind of a scrub style, but I don't know how to say it because Dad, he didn't want me to play like him. He wanted me to play the way I play, what I hear and feel. So, and, and it makes a lot of sense. He says, you know, you can, you have to sound like somebody in a sense, you know, as far as b building your foundation. He said, but if you play like an Earl Scruggs tune, he says, you can't be the man of his own game. So play it your way. And I don't know if that's good or bad. So that's, you know, I just play what I hear and feel instead of trying to duplicate somebody. I mean, you, you can't, it's already been done, so why try to, why duplicate it? You know, Dad, he, like I said, he loved old time, and he, and he just listened to people play, and he'd just try to duplicate it best he could. And, you know, I just watched him play it, and I loved it, just loved that tuning and the drone it gets. And, and, and bluegrass, nobody plays that version. You know, they, they play Sally Ann, but it's the Earl Scruggs version. And so, you know, you go to these festivals, and people are playing banjo instrumentals, and it's the same tune it seemed like they're playing. And at Sally Ann, no, nobody plays it, so it's a good, a good tune for me in the bluegrass field because nobody plays it. Here is um, Stevie Barr, no stranger to the folks of the, the Galax area. And um, Steve's, Stevie is a wonderful representation of, of today's generation that's, uh, that's carrying on the bluegrass related styles of the region here. And uh, what you got for us, Stevie? Uh, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> What I was going to do was, and I totally didn't realize, we had Bobby Lundy in here, so I had to uh, <laughs> just change gears a little bit. But uh, I had a capo, and I was going to do Sally Ann. So, <laughs> so now I'm not. So anyway, I, uh, I did like Bobby. Uh, I didn't get to learn from Teddy, so I had to listen to the record like you. So, and uh, I started out actually doing like Earl Scruggs, the uh, the regular style, like uh, most folks has heard on the old records. But uh, uh, being from Galax and uh, growing up with an old time family, uh, my mom and dad played in the White Top Mountain Band for years, and Albert Hash. And so I grew up as a little boy watching my dad learn how to make fiddles from Albert Hash. And so, uh, uh. I listened to old records. That's what we had, and uh, and uh, we didn't have but one channel on the TV. Uh, my mom and dad. We we didn't have a lot back then days, and uh, so uh, all I could we did was uh, help dad make music instruments and learn to play music. And so uh, uh, the uh, uh, that Sally Ann is my favorite rendition. That's the reason why I started learning to do it the old timey way, and I think it's the best way. And you can dance to it, but uh, 
you know, uh, every way is good. It don't matter the styles. Uh, I love all the styles, and but I just do. Uh, there's, I don't really uh, know what I do, really. So growing up, I, I listen to everybody, and I kind of throw my own stuff in there. And if somebody says, "Well, that's not the way Earl Scruggs did it," then oh well, that's just the way it is. So uh, I'll play Katie Hill. Maybe that'll work. So, and if anybody wants to play, you can uh, play it in the key of G. And my style uh, on this is more just the, I guess, more of a melodic type style. Uh, My name is Stevie Barr, and I'm from Galax, uh, Virginia. Uh, I play the banjo, and I've been playing for 36 years, and I'm, I've been started in 1975, and I play uh, three-finger picking style, and uh, I've learned from a lot of the old-timers around the area, uh, so some of the folks that's from Galax, uh, uh, like Beverly Davis and Charles Hawks, uh, and uh, also was influenced by a guy named Earl Scruggs. When I was uh, 16, I started traveling around uh, by myself with uh, different bands. Uh, I used to travel a lot with my mom and dad and do a lot of old time music. But when I was 16, I started uh, forming me my own band. And I started traveling around, playing with different folks. And by meeting different folks all around the country, I, it really, uh, it really opened up the doors to, to do a lot of different uh, venues. I've got to play uh, in several different countries. I've been to Paris, France, uh, Italy. I've got to play in Switzerland. Um, I got to, to go uh, on tours with the national folk uh, programs. Um, I've uh, toured with some country singers. I've, uh, uh, I toured with John Barry. He was a, a Grammy singer, uh, uh, had several number one hits back in the early 90s, and, uh, um, and I've, uh, I've also got to play for uh, a couple of presidents. I uh, got to play for uh, President Bush uh, when the country had its birthday. Uh, we celebrated that and uh, uh, the 200th uh, birthday, and then uh, uh, I got to play for the Queen of England, um, uh, so it's uh, it's been a very good, uh, very uh, very long, uh, enjoyable process of playing with different folks. Uh, I've had a, the chance to play for the inauguration of of a governor in Virginia, and so uh, uh, and uh, I just have enjoyed playing and, and meeting all the different folks. Uh, and I'm one of, one of the most enjoyable things you can play for all these other folks, but. It's just an enjoyment getting to play for just plain folks also. I like uh, sitting around in my fiddle shop just seeing people that's not got to hear a lot of the music and just sitting and playing a tune for them. This is called Soldier's Joy. <laughs>
I want to mention somebody, uh, a couple of guys actually, one we just lost this week. Um, it was a couple of brothers, uh, Jim and Clarence Marshall, uh, who were uh, both great banjo players from this region, actually over in, just over into Carroll County around Laurel Fork area. Uh, they, both of these guys represented um, two different styles, uh, traditional styles, and um, I'm going to play a tune here that comes from a guy that was a real big influence on both of them, but primarily the older of the two, which was Clarence Marshall. Um, and uh, Clarence was a great uh, three-finger, old-time three-finger banjo player, and Kirk know, knew Clarence well, uh, better than me, actually, and um, uh, Kirk plays in his style a lot, and I've got a number here that uh, comes from Reed Rakes, who um, was was sort of one of the primary influences on him. And uh, we'll play, let's, I guess go to D, maybe. And uh, thanks to folks like, um, well, actually, to this one person, uh, being Ralph Epperson at WPAQ, we have recordings of uh, Reed Rakes playing banjo. And... Uh, and if you don't have uh, this, you need to ch check it out. Um, uh, the CD that they did on, on uh, recordings that were done at WPAQ back in the early uh, early days there. What's it? What's the CD called? It's WPAQ, the Voice of the Blue Ridge there, Mountains. And there it's you on. Go. It's on Rounder. I think yes. it's back in print again. Is it back in print again? Okay. It's on Rounder Select, and it's all transcriptions that were done at WPAQ. And I'm going to play you. Uh, Reed Rakes' version of Chicken Reel, which is on that, that project. It's a great example of um, three-finger banjo pre-bluegrass in, uh, in this region. Index lead. Yeah, index lead. Uh, I don't know how technical we need to get with things today, but, but it is. It's index lead and a little bit middle finger as well. And um, get Kirk to back me up on the guitar here. My name's Jeremy Stevens, and um, I, I'm from Danville, Virginia, originally, and I started playing banjo when I was about uh, five years old or so. Um, I, some of the first music I recall hearing was Doc Boggs uh, doing country blues and a guy named Josh Thomas doing one called Heavy Water Blues, and that was on a cassette that uh, the um, Blue Ridge... Um, well, Ferrum College had put out, and um, I had that cassette my parents had gotten for me, and I listened to those two back-to-back -back on the cassette over and over and over and over, and uh, that was sort of my first introduction to banjo. I'd started previously playing the fiddle, and um, very soon after hearing some of those things and uh, got into the banjo, and I guess they say the rest is history, so... Um, a little bit different from folks my age in that my interest uh, is as much into old-time um, banjo styles as, as it is bluegrass. And my idols, uh, I guess you could say my idols, my favorite banjo players in bluegrass are the first-generation guys, and I want to be able to come from the same place that they're coming from 
and that's why I'm so interested in knowing and understanding the early styles that come before bluegrass, whether it be claw hammer, two finger, three finger. Um, I, I want to listen to the same music that, that those guys that were the first generation bluegrass guys heard growing up or listened to on records. And um, that's kind of where I, where I like to, to base everything that I, that I do off of. A lot of the older folks, I've always sought out older musicians and um, sort of the, the guy that's had the most influence on me is a local guy from Patrick County originally whose name is Troy Brammer. He's still living. Uh, he's about 83 now. And, um, and meeting him, he came from that earlier generation and he was raised listening to folks like the Mainers Mountaineers and uh, a lot of those early bands like that in the 30s and in the 20s as well on records and uh, and being connected with him and meeting him I, I got exposed to a lot of other folks in this area um, people like Jim Marshall and uh, and Clarence Marshall as well and uh, and also um, I'm from I live in am from Danville Virginia and uh, Kenny Rohr uh, who was there he um, through him, I met a lot of folks, such as Kirk Sutphin, who was in the uh, workshop today, and, uh, and got to meet some older guys through him as well. I'm very thankful for all of that. And uh, just getting to be around those guys, that a lot of them that are, almost all of them that are gone now, uh, was a really, really special thing, especially someone my age, to have a connection to music that goes back, you know, two and three generations. Um, I, I was talking about Jim and Clarence. I, I should have mentioned a little bit about Jim as well. Uh, Clarence, this is kind of an interesting thing. A lot of folks think of two finger as being an older style than three finger, uh, but with with those brothers, it was kind of sw swapped because Clarence was the older style and he played three finger. When Jim played a two finger style, he's the one that just passed away this week. And um, but Jim's music was much more like bluegrass. Uh, than what Clarence played, but he played a two-finger style. It was very interesting. So well, we'll get Kirk to play you one of Clarence's numbers. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's right. Don Reno was from originally from Western North Carolina, around Clyde, North Carolina, raised in South Carolina, uh, and uh, but he had influence on this region in the '50s because he was on a radio um, TV station in in Roanoke. Uh, Don Reno and Red Smiley had a daily uh, television show, and uh, they traveled through this area quite a bit. So I guess I'll do something here. In the early in the '20s, uh, a lot of the bands would record songs that were pop songs of the generation before. So you had folks like Charlie Poole and the North Carolina Ramblers recording songs that you would have found in sheet music um, from the 1890s and that sort of thing. That didn't quit with that generation. And uh, in fact, you had uh, the next generation or maybe two after, I guess that would be maybe, uh, with folks like Don Reno recording and playing pop songs um, on the banjo. And um, they didn't so much sing those tunes as they, they made instrumentals out of them. And I'll do you one of those here now that, uh, that Don Reno uh, recorded. And this one's called Yes Sir, That's My Baby. I just happened to think of one other person in, in talking about this that really should be mentioned since we're in Galax, and this is probably one of the most well-known uh, folks in the early days uh, from Galax, and that's Wade Ward. Um, everybody that's into old-time music is likely to know about Wade Ward, and he was from right here, and he's one of the folks that, well, he played fiddle and he played banjo, but he played three-finger banjo and he played clawhammer banjo, and... Um, he played often with uh, my favorite uh, fiddler uh, from the area here, which was Uncle Charlie Higgins. And um, we'll do a tune that, um, that Charlie Higgins played a good bit called Fanny Hill. And uh, I'll sort of give a little example of the way uh, Wade Ward played uh, a three-finger style to back up the fiddle. I do this because I feel like, you know, that we need to, to connect these styles to a really well-known face in old-time music. So here it is.
This is one that about every banjo player plays a good version of, so we'll do it here for you now. That's John Henry. You want to start us off? You can. Okay. Okay. 